Hi there, folks, it's Zach, and welcome back to my Star Wars channel, and today we are talking about one of the news releases that just came out from Bioware, and this is about a direct sale for the Unstable Arbiter's lightsaber going on the cartel market. Now, I have a lot to say about this, and I'm going to try to condense it as as easily as I can, but, uh, but guys, you've heard me talk about on you know, my show, Real Talk with Real Gamers, you've heard me mention in uh, different videos before, especially cartel pack openings, that... I have wanted to see direct sales on the cartel market for a very long time. This is something that I'm a huge advocate for, but it's for a very specific reason. Now let's talk a little bit about the announcer first. So here is what has come out from Bioware. They've let us know that they are going to go ahead and put up the Unstable Arbiter's lightsaber from Tuesday, March 7th through Tuesday, March 14th, and they're setting the price at 7,600 cartel coins. The reason they are doing this, um, you know, and I'm just going to skip kind of to the bottom of the display here. Uh, the net result for us is we want to see if this is something our players have interest in, while ensuring it doesn't undermine the value for players who already have one, and see how receptive everyone uh, will be to us continuing to rotate other platinum items in the cartel market in the future. Uh, more than likely, we would not direct sale platinum items until they've been unavailable for cartel packs for a number of months. This will also help maintain their rarity for a very fairly long time. Um, I'm I'm just going to call shenanigans <laughs> on this one, uh, but not for the reason you think, guys. Okay, so take all emotions. If you're you know excited, if you're pissed, if you're somewhere in between, take all emotions out of this for a second, and we have to, again, look at Bioware as a business. And right now, the way the cartel market is set up is that probably, I'm going to throw out a guesstimate here, 10% um, of players, uh, again, it's a guesstimate, are what I would call whales. These are people with a very, very large amount of disposable income. Okay, I'm not a whale by any stretch of the imagination, okay? Um, in games like uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius for my phone, these are the guys who put up YouTube videos where they, they tell you they have spent over $8,000 to get units uh, you know, that they wanted for out of... Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. These are the guys who go into Star Wars The Old Republic and can pump hundreds of dollars into cartel packs until they get something like an Unstable Arbiter's lightsaber, okay? Uh, when it comes to the cartel market, you know, it's almost like the, uh, the U.S. economy, and I hate to be blunt, uh, everybody gets a vote in America, but, you know, statistically speaking, it is that yeah, it's like the richest 3% of our country support our entire economy. They pump more money into it. And so when people see government catering to the rich, it is because, financially speaking, they do support the backbone of a lot of our economy. It sucks. And uh, and that's a whole other argument for a whole other thing. Uh, let's just right now stick with Star, to, you know, Star Wars and the cartel market. So here's the thing. 7,600 cartel coins. I have a, actually another screen up here for cartel market or cartel coin purchasing. And here I want to give you guys an idea of what they're asking for here. So 7,600 cartel coins is basically 60 bucks. That, that's basically what they're asking you to pay here for the lightsaber. And that should tell you automatically what kind of numbers they were pulling in when these things were random items inside of cartel market packs. For them to think that people would willingly space pay $60 for this item tells you that when they had these items in the cartel packs, people must have paying, you know, at least on average to get that item 60 bucks. Uh, and they're looking to see if this is even a method to break even or if they can make more money doing this. Guys, I'm going to tell you straight up, that's not the kind of disposable income I personally have. Am I upset about the price setting for this? No, they, they said that this is a test, that they're seeing how much money can be made through this in comparison to their current sales model. So they can set whatever price they want. The question is, will you buy it? And guys, uh, just like my buddy Zenoff says, this is a chance for you to vote with your wallet. If this is a price that you think is fair for platinum items in the cartel market, by all means buy. I, for one, don't feel that's a fair price, and I will shortly explain why. But I would, I would definitely say that that is a very high price, but I understand why they're setting it. Again, this is for them to test the viability of a different marketing strategy to try to make as much or more from 
the current business model they are currently using, which caters basically to whales. And even right now, I would say that this direct sale still caters towards whales, um, with the possibility that the the only major change is if you were a whale and you were spending more than 7,600 cartel coins to get something like this, then you're looking at this as a good deal and you just pay for it. If you were not a whale and you and you didn't buy into the cartel market system because you didn't like the RNG aspect of it, well then this might look like a good deal because at least with 100% accuracy you know you will get the item that you paid for. However, I would still say that the price set is really high. Uh, let me explain why really quick. So hopefully you guys have kind of taken this in with your eyes. I'm gonna so go ahead this is things. Guild Wars 2, and this is my main character on Guild Wars 2. How you doing? Uh, this is my engineer. I love my engineer. Uh, in Guild Wars 2, this is my main. I have a bunch of max level characters, but this is by far and away my favorite. Now, what's what I want to point out is the outfit that he's wearing. This is actually not a standard outfit that you can get in the game. This is one that you buy through their, what they call the gem store, which is basically their version of the cartel market. It runs a little differently than the one in the Star Wars, but a lot of the basic premises are the same. They will put up an ultra cool looking item and let you you know, pay money for gems, and then those gems can be exchanged for the item. Let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Black Lion Trading Company, and I'm going to show you the gem store. So over here in the Style tab, this is where things like weapon skins and things like, uh, you know, the, uh, the armor, this is where you can purchase those things. And if I scroll down a little bit, I'm going to find what's called the Magitek armor skin. There it is. Magitek medium armor skin. Okay, so this is the one I'm using on my character, and I love this outfit. This is the only one I use on this character because I love it so much. And you can see that they have a price to 800 gems. Now that means nothing to you if you've never played Guild Wars 2, you have no basis of currency. So I'm actually going to go into the buy gems area up here so you can see how much 800 gems is. Uh, one of the things I also like too is... Uh, you know, is, is the exchange rate here. So here I can see, okay, 800 gems is 10 bucks, okay? So an item that I really like cost me 10 bucks to get in game. I personally felt that is a good price for that, especially for something I use all the time on this character. And just like in Star Wars, I have the option of using this same outfit design on other characters. Yes, the way that works is differently than it works in Star Wars Old Republic, uh, but the base principle remains the same. Once I own it, I own it, okay, and I can use this on any character I want that uses medium armor. Slightly different restrictions, it is two different games, but the price is really what I'm aiming at here. 800 gems is 10 bucks. 10 bucks, I felt, was a great price to get this outfit, and it's one, like I said, that I use all the time. Okay, uh, $60 is pretty extreme, <laughs> in my opinion, for, for any particular item. If I go down the style tab, there's actually a bunch of items I have here. There's, uh, yeah, that Stormbow. You know, I definitely have, and, and people buy all sorts of really interesting items here off of the gem store. And different things go on sale at different times, depending on events, uh, holidays, etc. Um, main point is, again, though, guys, here, you know, Guild Wars 2 has been free to play since the launch of the game, okay? And the, um, that means the money that they make comes exclusively from the gem store. It doesn't come through any part of subscriptions, okay? And these are prices that are able to keep this game afloat. And as you can see, this game looks beautiful. It plays great. I have a lot of fun with Guild Wars 2. Uh, it, it's definitely something that I've, I enjoy pretty much on a daily basis. I'll at least log in just to get the login rewards, all right? Uh, and I, I haven't even gotten to showing you guys like the world of Guild Wars 2. It is just... It's a beautiful world, okay? So for them to sustain a business model off of of microtransactions that run off of, you know, 10 to, you know, 15 bucks, you know, is, that's a really good deal. All right, let's go back and take a look at Star Wars Yield Republic now with, uh, with that in the back of your brain. So here we are back again at the Cartel Market Exchange. And, uh, and again, this is the main point I'm trying to make is that I feel the Arbiter's lightsaber is priced way too high and the reason being is I feel like it's catering to the wrong audience here's the argument we're trying to make to Bioware and this is what I'm going to encourage all of you guys to do go to the forums and tell them I love the fact that you're doing a direct sale I would love to buy more items through direct sale however the price is not one that I feel is reasonable and if you include this particular piece of logic, which is that 
the majority of gamers, if they buy that same item, it makes up for the weight of what the whales would be spending on a higher priced item. That's, that's really what it comes down to. If every player in the game bought the unstable lightsaber, unstable arbiter's lightsaber for 10 bucks, you easily made up the weight of just a few people being able to buy it at 60. In my opinion, I think that's a smart deal. And that is what I would recommend you guys go pitch to Bioware. So if you're going to comment on uh, Dolphy.net, this is actually Dolphy.net right here. Lots of credit, great site. Uh, if you want to put down a comment and join in that discussion and mention there you know, that you feel like that's too much of a high price, that's great. But also put in a counteroffer. Uh, the way things change and the way we've gotten Bioware up to this point is by giving them logical reasons to try to change the business model. And don't forget, a lot of these microtransaction decisions come from the top. They are emulating other games and trying to figure out how they can make this game more profitable. If you want these things to change, don't look at the devs as your enemy. Don't be pissed at Eric Musco here for, for being the messenger. Use him as your advocate to making changes up the ladder. If Eric gets tons of player feedback, where, you know, on the forums it just explodes with several hundred, you know, to a couple thousand gamers all saying, hey, look, we would love to buy that lightsaber, but it's just priced at a price we can't afford. But if it was this price, we all could buy it. He could walk right up to his boss and say, look, the, the sale right now is failing because only X amount of people have been able to afford it. But here's how many players could be able to afford it and have already pitched that they would buy it if it was set at this price. That is one of the things that influences change. Because people at the top of any corporation, they only really see dollar signs. They only really see, like I said, black and red. So guys, uh, I hope this video helps. And I hope this uh, you know, definitely gives you guys a basis of comparison for, you know, say, other games as well. Uh, games like Guild Wars 2 use a free-to-play model. It's a game I enjoy. It's a game I play. And for me to see you know, Star Wars trying to charge $60 for one particular item in the game... You know, some people may want to immediately buy into that if they have that kind of disposable income, but I would like to say that Star Wars players are some of the smartest and most passionate players I've met. And I, I feel you guys are educated consumers, but it's hard to know what is or is not overpriced until you've made some comparisons with at least something else on the market. And, uh, and I hope this helps, guys. So, uh, for everyone at Zach Ember, this is Zach, and we'll see you next time.